Hey guys, well today I want to try out a new tripod cooking system that I got in the mail. So it's pretty compact. It's an intriguing idea. Comes in a case like that. Real compact, fit in your pack easily. Let me get a fire started and uh, we'll check it out. Alright, so what I've got here is a little tripod system. The gentleman wanted me to make sure that I announced that I got this for free. I got this for free in exchange for doing a review for him. So, good or bad, <laughs> this is going to get posted. So, he just uh, contacted me kind of out of the blue and asked if I would do a review. And I said, sure, I'm always looking for new gear. And uh, this thing kind of intrigued me a little bit because just the idea of a portable tripod system. Most tripod systems that you see folks camping with, they car camp and it's a huge cast iron affair. Whereas this comes in this little package here, I would say it's probably mm, maybe 16 inches long, approximately. And so you've got all your little pieces here. This is exactly the way it came, no instructions or anything, but it's not very difficult to figure out. You've got one end threaded, one end not threaded on three of the sticks, and on the other sticks you've got female threads and male threads. Well it's pretty obvious that you start combining them together. And let's see how many legs we have here. And I'll just combine one of the ground ends, you can tell. Grab another ground end. Well, it's a tripod, so you know there's three legs, right? When it's all said and done. So I'll just keep adding parts. Until we get it all assembled. And one more here. Add a little bit of wood to my fire here. Don't want the fire going out. All right, so I got my three pieces assembled. And the next thing is this hub. It's a threaded hub. Okay, and like I said, there's no directions, but it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, if you start putting your tripod together and the feet point inwards, then you know you got it upside down, right? I mean, it's not rocket science. So there's one side. tripod right there. Now the way, let me reset up the camera to make sure you're getting a view of this, but it's got a lot of adjustment with this chain here. Well, let's throw this over our fire. So the adjustment comes from this little chain system here. Okay, there's a lot of adjustment. You could go have your pot way low have your pot way high. Now I've not done a, a strength test on this, but it's a tripod. It's inherently strong. That's why we use, you can use dead wood, you can use whatever if you're going to make one. But with this, that's a lot of weight right there I'm putting on there. Alright, let me get my pot and see if we can boil some water with this thing. I really, one of the tests I want to do is, is so right off the bat, let's just take a look at this. It's a lot smaller than a tripod we would normally make in the woods. But it's more of, a, I can see it being kind of like a backpacking type tripod. And 
you know, if you don't want to or if you're not allowed to cut living trees or any type of wood or anything like that, or if firewood's semi-scarce or if wood's semi-scarce, then this might be a good idea for you. Like I said, it's a little smaller than the normal tripods that we make, but it can be smaller for two reasons. First of all, the legs are not metal are not uh, wood, so being this close to the fire, it's not going to burn through my tripod. So I can afford to have the base a little narrower. Another thing is this adjustment system. You can adjust this like one length at a time, one link, chain link at a time. With our traditional tripod method, we want our tripod quite a bit larger. That way, if you narrow the base or increase the base, that can give you adjustment for your pot. Also with the cordage, you can wrap it around the legs, however you want to do that will give you some adjustment. But with this system, you don't really need to worry about that. So let me get my pot and just kind of see how it all lines up there. All right, so a test what I'm doing right now is, is I've got my fire way too big. I want to put this thing in some serious heat conditions and just make sure that there's nothing weird that, you know, is inside of like these joints, which I know there's not, but you know, if you're gonna be cooking over it, you're gonna have it in some hot environment. I wanna make sure that it's gonna be okay. You can tell right now, this is gonna be hotter than a $2 pistol right here, okay? So you're not gonna want your fire that big. There's no reason to have your fire that big, but like I said, this is just part of my test. I wanna make sure everything's kosher with it. It's not, there's not some weird piece of plastic in it or something's not gonna fail in this heat. Let's let this fire die down a little bit, get this stuff out of the way of the fire so that we can actually touch it without gloves on. And then I'll put my pot in there and, and boil up some water. Everything seems to be holding together pretty good. All right, well, my fire's died down a little bit. Let's see how hot that is. That's pretty hot just from my fire right there. So I'm definitely not going to want to touch that contraption without my gloves on. And that's not the fault of the, it's not the fault of the tripod. It's just, I like big fires. <laughs> All part of the testing process. See how high a fire and how hot you can get it and see if it'll fail. Everything seems semi-kosher with it. I got my handy dandy ice bucket here. Full of snow. Okay, so she's got plenty of adjustment. Step it way down there on the fire. A little too low. Perfect. Oh, she's sinking into the, the ground spawn right here. It's conducting the heat into the ground and the ground starting to, to thaw. That's why it's kind of getting out of, out of shape there. So far, so good. Like you're not gonna put a huge cast iron pot on here. This is gonna be one or two people, you know, maybe three depending on the size of your pot. But if you're backpacking, you're not allowed to cut wood or not allowed to cut anything big, maybe you just got scrub brush, maybe it's the prairie, maybe all you have is sagebrush and long symmetrical or long straight pieces of wood are hard to come by, you know, I can see where you would use something like this. That's quite cool to the touch, that's actually cold. That's cold to the touch, that's good. It's cold up here. This is cold. All the legs so far are cold. All right, well, while my water's boiling here, or getting ready to boil, let's talk about this for a few minutes. Why would I buy something like this? Well, I think this would be good for um, folks who live maybe on the prairie, who have only sagebrush and limited fuel supplies, limited building supplies, if you will, to build a tripod. I think that it is kind of a neat idea for backpacking. After I'm done boiling my water and putting this through its paces, what I'm doing right now or whatever, I'm gonna take it back to the house and I've got a postal scale. I'll weigh how much it, uh, how much 
bunch of waves. I looked this up on Amazon. Um, the gentleman sent me the link for it. And I will say that the picture is really odd. The picture that they have for this product is... I don't know what the deal is. If they photoshopped each piece and then put it in there or what. But it, to me, in the picture, it looked like the tripod was quite a bit larger. And the pot that they have hanging under this is humongous. It's like a... My water boiling? Uh, it's like it's a gallon pot or even bigger maybe and they've got it way up. I mean, it's just a really unusual picture. Hopefully you can tell just from this video what the scale is here. Uh, I, didn't bring a, I didn't bring a ruler or anything like that, but I'm going to say this is two and a half feet tall, maybe, maybe two feet tall. And the diameter, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the leg, uh, the footprint of it, so to speak, is approximately a foot and a half across between each leg. So, I mean, that hopefully that gives you a little bit of a scale. This is my ice cream pot, or not my ice cream, but my ice bucket that I did on my other video. So this is really similar to, a, I'm going to say it holds about two quarts. So it's about a two-quart pot. So hopefully you can kind of tell the scale with that. Um, you know, there's not really much else to test with this, to be honest with you. Does it have a lot of adjustment? Yes. Does it go together easy? Went together really easy for me. I didn't need any cordage. I didn't need nothing. Plus, which, you know, whatever, if you did need cordage, you got cordage right here on your little bag. But uh, is it withstanding the heat that is put out by a pretty, pretty hot fire? I had it going pretty good size. I mean, I had my fire up to here, which I didn't really need to do, but um, it's... I mean, there's not much to test with it. It's, it went together pretty good. I will put a link, I'll put an annotation or whatever right up here somewhere of how much this cost when I looked it up on Amazon. It's over $20. It's between $20 and $30, closer to $30 if I remember right. But like I said, I'll put that up there, the exact thing. I'll put the link in the description of the video. For $30 bucks, or close to $30 bucks, I would like to see the threads on the parts, a finer thread. What happens when you get a coarse thread is the parts don't fit together. Sometimes there's, there's some give between the threads, okay? So there's a little loosey-goosiness to it. If, and I'll show you what I mean by that. We don't need to get my water to boil. We know it's gonna boil. I mean, it's, it's boiling water. So let's pull it off the fire and go into this in a little more detail. All right, so here, this is what I'm talking about with the, with the coarse threads. Let me make sure I can touch this. Cooled off super fast. <clears throat> it's literally been like 30 seconds since I pulled it off the fire. And it's super cool. Okay, so this is what I meant with the coarse threads. I'd like to see less play in these legs. Now that's just me being picky, okay? But this is just what I look at. I would like to see there being less play in the threads like that. And I tightened it a little bit more and it, it, it stopped that. But I think that if it had a little finer thread, and it looks to me like it's, it may be a quarter 20 thread. But something's going on with it where it's not, see there's, I mean it threads together. There's, like I said, I'm just being nitpicky about it. But there is a little wobble to it, but nothing that really affects the, the performance of it. checking the threads, the parts that, you know, go together. Is there any damage, any internal damage? No, not at all. I'm going to take it apart, put it away in this little case. Thank you. 
fits in this little case just fine. Alright guys, well I just went and checked in the garage, it's not a quarter 20 thread pattern. I don't know what thread pattern it is, it's a little bigger than quarter 20. Whatever, not the end of the world. It would have been kind of cool because with that quarter 20 like all thread, you can buy couplings and all sorts of stuff. You could have modified it, you know, whatever, but it's super small on the need list, that's for sure. So, alright guys, hope you liked the video. Take care.